Hello, everyone. So, long story short, my security clearance is not adequate for the anomaly you're being briefed on today. So, Mobile Task Force Commander Robert Hunt will be covering the briefing after I get a few systems up and running. Anyway, I'll see you all later, and I hope you learned something. Goodbye. Thank you, Dr. Miller. Can you confirm that ACID is online and Scramble version 2.1 has been initialized? Thank you. Let's begin. Item number. SCP-096. Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-096 is to be contained in its cell, a 5 meter cubed airtight steel cube at all times. Weekly checks for any cracks or holes are mandatory. There are to be absolutely no video surveillance or optical tools of any kind inside SCP-096's cell. Security personnel will use pre-installed pressure sensors and laser detectors to ensure SCP-096's presence inside the cell. Any and all photographs, video or recordings of SCP-096's likeness are strictly forbidden without approval from Dr. D or O5. Description SCP-096 is a humanoid creature measuring approximately 2.38 meters in height. Subject shows very little muscle mass, with preliminary analysis of body mass suggesting mild malnutrition. Arms are grossly out of proportion with the rest of the subject's body, with an approximate length of 1.5 meters each. Skin is mostly devoid of pigmentation, with no sign of any body hair. SCP-096's jaw can open to four times the norm of an average human. Other facial features remain similar to an average human, with the exception of the eyes, which are also devoid of pigmentation. It is not yet known whether SCP-096 is blind or not. It shows no signs of any higher brain functions and is not considered to be sapient. SCP-096 is normally extremely docile, with pressure sensors inside its cell indicating it spends most of the day pacing by the eastern wall. However, when someone views SCP-096's face, whether it be directly, via video recording, or even a photograph, it will enter a stage of considerable emotional distress. SCP-096 will cover its face with its hands and begin screaming, crying, and babbling incoherently. Approximately one to two minutes after the first viewing, SCP-096 will begin running to the person who viewed its face, who will from this point on be referred to as SCP-096-1. Documented speeds have varied from 35 km per hour to km per hour, and seems to depend on the distance from SCP-096-1. At this point, no known material or method can impede SCP-096's progress. The actual position of SCP-096-1 does not seem to affect SCP-096's response. It seems to have an innate sense of SCP-096-1's location. Note, this reaction does not occur when viewing artistic depictions. See Document 096-1. Documentation 0961 of Experiment 0961. Experiment 0961 is headed by Dr. Dan. Purpose is to test SCP-096's abilities while obtaining complete physical description of SCP-096. D-9031 is a 32-year-old convicted felon and former tattoo artist. D-9031 is placed inside Bathysphere 303A, which is then lowered in the Tonga Trench off the coast of New Zealand. Position is approximately 7 kilometers from SCP-096's temporary containment cell at site. The following was recorded via video surveillance inside Bathysphere 303A, between it and Dr. Dan's control site on the New Zealand mainland. Bathysphere 303A reaches final depth of 10,800 meters. It's stopped. What now? Do you feel fine? No sickness? Anything? My ears hurt. That should be expected. Now, on your left, you should see a steel container. Open it, and there will be a manila folder holding several photographs. Open it and describe the first photograph, please. D-9031 complies. The camera is located so the photograph cannot be seen. 
Nothing. It's an empty cell. Thank you. Please set this photograph face down in the receptacle to your right and look at the next photograph. It's the same cell, but there's a foot in it, I think. Describe it, please. Uh, it's pale and bony. Sort of creepy, actually. Place the photograph in the receptacle face down and look at the next one. Okay. Oh, shit! Describe the photograph. It's a... I don't know. Some creepy-ass person. Describe the photograph, please. Hell, man. He's pale as white eyes and something up is happening with his mouth. What the hell is that thing? At this point, approximately 1332 standard time, Dr. Dan and Experiment Control is notified that SCP-096 has breached containment. The fastest path to SCP-0961 has been cleared of civilians and other image capturing devices, and SCP-096 is now being tracked by satellites via tracking collar. On your right, there should be another steel container. Open it. It's a pad of paper and a pencil. Yes. Please draw a sketch of the photo you saw. SCP-0961 mumbles an expletive and spends the next 20 minutes drawing a sketch of the photograph. At the time of completion, SCP-096 is confirmed to be kilometers away from SCP-0961. I'm done. Good. Place the drawing in the receptacle on your left and close the door. SCP-0961 complies and the sketch leaves Bathysphere 303A in a watertight buoyancy container. The other photographs are then incinerated in the onboard incinerator. What now? Please, stand by. Forty minutes pass. SCP-096 is now confirmed to be at SCP-0961's position and is diving. Transponder signal ends at 9,339 meters as pressure goes beyond the device's operational limits. The camera shows the bathysphere shaking slightly. From SCP-0961's reaction, it is assumed SCP-096 is on the hull and is visible through the viewport. Video and audio feed is cut as the hull of Bathysphere 303A is breached. SCP-096 is recovered by Surface Recovery Team Foxtrot 303A without incident. The sketch of SCP-096 is also recovered, and a quick test confirms no hostile reaction from SCP-096. Sketch is sent to Experiment Control on New Zealand, while SCP-096 is moved to permanent containment. Upon arriving at SCP-0961's location, SCP-096 will proceed to kill and SCP-0961. 100% of cases have left no traces of SCP-0961. SCP-096 will then sit down for several minutes before regaining its composure and becoming docile once again. It will then attempt to make its way back to its natural habitat Due to the possibility of a mass chain reaction, including breach of foundation secrecy and large civilian loss of life, retrieval of subject should be considered alpha priority. Dr. has also petitioned for immediate termination of SCP-096. See Interview 096-1. Order was awaiting approval. Termination order has been approved and is to be carried out by Dr. on See Incident 0961A. So, containment has been attained? Yes, Doctor. Let me see the security footage. Begin log. A large steel cube is shown in the middle of a research lab, which is teeming with a dozen or so researchers. In view of the camera is a control booth, displaying readings from various sensors inside the cube. Fast forward one minute, 32 seconds. The control booth operator leans forward, alerted to the various readings on the sensors. Approximately five seconds later, a steel wall on the containment cube receives a sizable dent bending outward. The dent becomes larger before breaking. SCP-096 is seen bending the steel away, frantically trying to escape. Emergency plates drop on the cube as a containment breach is sounded. 
The security tape has SCP-096's face blurred out, as per containment protocol. Two security teams enter the room as SCP-096 breaks out of containment. Live rounds and tranquilizer darts are fired to no visible effect. Approximately 90% of researchers and security personnel have directly viewed SCP-096's face, and a code Lima is declared. The room and surrounding areas are sealed and flushed with class nerve agent. Approximately two minutes later, SCP-096 breaches research site and travels kilometers through the outside desert, traveling end log. Echo Romeo was assigned to immediate containment breach. When we realized just how big a breach we were dealing with, we were completely overwhelmed. Funny how the best and brightest minds in the world can be so unprepared. So you're saying it's your own fault? Absolutely not. This was a new discovery in SCP-096's behavior. We had no way to know. And we were lucky it didn't turn into an XK. Begin log. Helm cam footage from ER-1. Footage from inside a UH-60 shows SCP-096 on the desert floor, moving at a considerable speed. This is Echo Romeo Actual. We have visual of the target. Not and increasing. ERA listens to the radio as orders are relayed. SCP-096 can be seen slowly gaining speed. ERA motions off camera. ER-3 appears, holding a modified XM-500 anti-material rifle. Two shots are fired. The first misses, and the second hits SCP-096 in the lower leg. SCP-096 stumbles, but recovers. Speed change is insignificant. I repeat, no effect on target. ERA motions to ER-3 again. ER-3 fires three more shots. The first two miss, and the third hits SCP-096 in the head. SCP-096 falls, skids, and rolls several times, reducing its speed minimally. SCP-096 rolls to its feet and continues unabated. Camera pans up to see 8V-22 Ospreys belonging to Mobile Task Force Tau-1 flying overhead and past the helicopters on the same outbound vector as SCP-096. Camera cuts out. End log. Begin log. Video interview log 0961A. Dr. Alexi appears very calm, determined, and answers all questions slowly and deliberately. Where were you exactly at the time of the breach? On break, getting a cup of coffee. It was pure luck I wasn't caught in the containment area. Describe your actions directly after the containment breach. I sent Echo Romeo after SCP-096 and alerted Dr. Dan to the situation. We then set upon the task of locating SCP-0961. Once the general direction of SCP-096 was determined, I sent the Mobile Task Force Tau-1 ahead to evacuate civilian population centers in SCP-096's bed, all according to containment protocol. End log. Begin log. Dr. Daniel, Dan, sits patiently. On the table in front of him is what looks to be a set of modified night vision goggles. For the record, where were you exactly during SCP-096's containment breach? In the mountain range, trying to find more information on SCP-096's origins. It was a quick research expedition, so I left Dr. Alexei in charge of containment. He's competent enough, if a bit eager, and he has proved himself in the past. This is all confirmed by the various related paperwork, so don't go think- It was just for the record, Doctor. Now, knowing that SCP-096 is immune to all known forms of damage while in an enraged state, why would you order the sniper attacks from the emergency response team? Why not? <laughs> if there was a chance to slow down SCP-096 and give Mobile Task Force Tau one more time, then we had to try it. I put ER in no danger and the choppers were in danger of being outrun anyway. Honestly, ER could do little else to help or harm the situation. I see. Now, could you explain this? Interview emotions to the goggles lying on the table. Yes. This is Project Scramble. 
and eyepiece we assigned to ER and Mobile Task Force Tau I, designed by Dr. Alexei and myself specifically for SCP-096. It carries a small microprocessor which constantly analyzes the viewing field for the facial features of SCP-096. Facial recognition software inside instantly identifies them, scrambling the image into an unrecognizable mess before the light reaches the human eye. It's quite ingenious, really. And expensive. Very. Which is why it's such a shame it didn't work. End log. Begin log. Audio transcript between Mobile Task Force Tau-1 and modified EG-3 Sentry AWACS. Call sign, Big Brother. Pause brave in the air. Moving it's Awaiting vector. Electronics online. Cruising altitude reached. Uploading program scramble to all camera systems. Cameras online. Big Brother is now watching. What outbound vector is the target currently heading? Target is currently westbound, traveling on... <sighs> Shit. Yeah, he's on the I-40. I think he just flipped a semi. Uh, outbound vector is... Degrees by... Next town on the vector is... I'd say a couple hundred kilometers. Shit. MTF, we're suggesting Echo Romeo begin evacuating the I-40. I don't know how many cars the target has wrecked. Hold one. That's a negative, big brother. ER is reporting that the target is outrunning her choppers. They can't get ahead of him. Then get them to stop the motorists on the other lane. I don't know how many people have seen this thing's face. End log. The first three elements of Tau-1 succeeded in gathering the townsfolk in the first three towns without incident. SCP-0961 was confirmed not to be in any of these when SCP-096 ran through each in turn without stopping. However, a video log in NTF Tau shows SCP-0961 being identified in the town of and the ensuing incident. Show it. Begin log. Helm cam footage from Element 4 of Mobile Task Force Tau 1 in the town of Most of the townspeople are gathered in the square, all blindfolded. Helicopters sweep the town. Indistinct orders are heard over the loudspeakers from both the helicopters and the ground personnel. The target is entering the proximity zone. All units, activate scramble gear and begin crowd control procedures. All civilians are not to move from their spot or remove their blindfolds. If you move or touch your blindfold, you will be shot. I repeat, all civilians are being shot. Approximately two kilometers away, SCP-096 is seen to be coming over the crest of the hills. It tries to slow down on the descent, but trips and tumbles down at high speed, crashing through several houses before regaining its footing almost without delay. Civilians are not to move. You will be shot. Several shots are heard, none of which are directed at SCP-096. SCP-096 stops for one second before running into the crowd of townsfolk, throwing many aside and trampling more. More shots are heard as the crowd begins dispersing. The loudspeaker is unintelligible under the vocalizations of SCP-096. SCP-096 locates SCP-0961, a middle-aged man, and the camera views SCP-096 grabbing him before it is hit by a fleeing townsperson and is dislocated from the helmet. End log. Begin log. Video interview log 0961C. I was looking through SCP-0961's house with my squad. Poor bastard was a semi-pro mountaineer. Took a trip to the... Apparently he took a snapshot of the landscape and just happened to capture SCP-096 in the background. Wilford holds up four fingers for emphasis. Four pixels. Four fucking pixels. I doubt the guy even knew what he saw. He was probably just looking at the picture one day noticed an off-color patch of snow. I went on with his day. How did you find it? Well, a scramble gear picked it up straight away. The lieutenant got the picture and took it down to the chopper before I ever got to see it. By then, the damn monster had taken down Big Brother and had peeled open the former Major Striker. All hell was breaking loose. So the scramble gear was... ineffective? <laughs> ineffective? The goddamn 
scramble were pieces of shit that killed the whole damn task force. You know, only three people were alive besides me. All because some retard egghead thought a state-of-the-art countermeasure to SCP-096's hostile reaction. Those bloody idiots could have put a bike over the target's head and been done with it, but no. We had to use state-of-the-art scramble. End log. Begin log. What did that f***er call me? I'll show that goddamn son of a bitch what an egghead is after I batch open his Interviewee begins shouting and cursing. Do we need to administer a sedative, Doctor? No. No, I apologize. Scramble was a really ingenious idea. However, it was a failure because we did not fully know how a CP-096 worked. You see, as the chip inside Scramble picked up SCP-096's facial features and began scrambling them, there was a split second of uninterrupted light flow to the retina. Computers are fast, but not as fast as light, so there was a split second image of SCP-096's direct face sent to the brain. It wasn't even consciously received, but apparently it was enough to trigger the hostile reaction in SCP-096. So, with the report of this photograph, that's the most disturbing part of this whole incident. You know when the former SCP-096-1 went on his mountain trip? 1990. That's the years of that photo hanging there before he saw SCP-096. Since the brain doesn't need to be aware that it is viewing SCP-096's face to trigger the reaction, there could be ticking time bombs hidden literally anywhere in the world. <laughs> How many photographs are out there containing SCP-096 just going unnoticed, waiting for a careful eye? <sighs> As I said before, I want this thing terminated. Now! End log. Just a quick question, Doctor. Um, what exactly were you planning on doing there? Major Jack Wilford was top-notch SBS when we recruited him. I was also a recon corpsman, sir, and I was deployed in the Caucasus. Marines beat SBS. No, they don't. Enough! Both of you. Moving on. Begin log. Video interview log 0961D. I got the bag over its head. Yes, you told me that. Could you tell me exactly what transpired? It was done with all its... And it was sitting there. In the highway. <sighs> Just got done ripping open a minivan. Interviewee is silent. And... I'm... Wes landed the chopper. I got out and bagged it. I put the bag over its head. It got calm and they took it. So the victims in the minivan were the last to have viewed SCP-096's face. Interviewee is silent. Interviewee remains silent for the remainder of the interview and was released. He was later found in his bunk room, having committed suicide via hanging with a makeshift rope. A half-crushed pacifier was found in his fist. End log. Begin log. Video log 0961D. Confiscated tape from news broadcast CNN. The image shows first responders surrounding the remains of a crashed plane over the shoulder of a field reporter. The plane, which seems to be military in origin, has no outward markings designating it as part of the U.S. military. While first responders look for a black box recording, it is thought by police that the plane crashed due to a massive cabin breach in both the cockpit and the fuselage. The reporter motions to a large hole in the side of the plane, which several firefighters are climbing inside. Paramedics have found only three bodies, which is odd for a plane apparently requiring a crew of around 20 men. Police have suggested that the reporter is cut off, as three super stallions are shown hovering overhead, two of which land and begin unloading troops belonging to Mobile Task Force Epsilon. Shut up the camera. Shut up the mother f End log. Begin log. So, are we finished here? One last question, Doctor. Our statement, as it seems. 
We find it interesting that there was no break room at research site. Or coffee. The interviewee remains silent. We think it would be best if you began talking. Remainder of video interview log 0961A, redacted. End log. I don't see what that has to do with me. There's no reason to play dumb, Doctor. He's told us everything. Well then, I guess there's no use in feigning anything. <laughs> Is there? Audio recording. 05 hearing. Viewing your testimony and available footage and the confession of the late Dr. Alexei, it is the unanimous agreement of the O5 that you are to be terminated for your part in the gross breach of SCP-096. And I thought you would know the meaning of for the greater good. Do not try my patience, Doctor. Given the incident's scope and potential, the O5 have approved your request for termination of SCP-096. Given the lack of personnel with understanding of SCP-096, the termination will be entrusted to you under heavy guard and the personal supervision of me. Your own termination will be scheduled at a later date. End log. That's horrible, Doctor. How could you know it th worked? There was only a matter of time until that happened in a major population center and its face spread all over the news. I can kill 096, but I've killed myself in the process. Audio log from interview 096 1. Interviewer, Dr. Interviewed, retired Captain. Former commander of Retrieval Team Zulu 9 Alpha. Retrieval Incident 096 1A. Begin log. It always sucks ass to get initial retrieval duty. You have no idea what the damn thing is capable of besides what jacked up information the field techies can scrape up. And you're lucky if they even tell you the whole story. They told us to bag and tag. Didn't tell us jack shit about not looking at the damn thing. Could you describe the mission, please? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we had two choppers. One with my team, and one on backup with Zulu 9B and Dr. We spotted the target about two clicks north of our patrol path. I'm guessing he wasn't facing in our direction, else he would have taken us out then and there. And your report says SCP-096 didn't react to the cold. It was minus degrees Celsius. Actually, it was minus... And yes, it was butt naked, and it didn't do so much as shiver. Anyway, we landed, approached the target, and Corporal got ready to bag it. That's what Dr. called it. I turned to answer it, and that's what saved me. The target must have turned and my whole squad saw it. That's when SCP-096 entered an agitated, emotional state. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> Got the willies for a second. That's alright. Yeah, well, I never saw its face. My squad did. And they paid for it up the ass. Could you describe it a little more, please? Yeah. Yeah. It started screaming at us and crying. Not animal roaring, though. It sounded exactly like a person. Really fucking creepy. We started firing when it picked up Corporal and ripped off his leg. God, he was screaming for our help. Anyway, we were blowing chunks out of the target, round after round. Didn't do jack shit. I almost lost it when it started. That's when you ordered the use of an AT-4 HDT launcher. An anti-tank gun. Started carrying it ever since SCP got loose. I've seen those things tear through tanks like tissue paper. Did the same thing to the target. There was significant damage to SCP-096. It didn't even flinch. It kept tearing apart my squad, but with half of its torso gone. <laughs> but was it taking damage? If it was, it wasn't showing it. It must have lost all its organs, all its blood, but it didn't acknowledge any of it. Its bone structure wasn't hurt at all, though. It kept tearing my squad apart. So, no actual structural damage. 
How many rounds would you say were fired at SCP-096? At the least, a thousand. Our door gunner kept his GAL-19 on it for at least 20 seconds. 20 f seconds. That's 650 caliber rounds pumped into the thing. Might as well have been spitting at it. This is when Zulu-9B arrived. Yeah. Yeah, my squad was gone. Zulu-9B managed to get the bag over its head and it just sat down. We got it into the chopper and got it here. I don't know how I never saw its face. Maybe God or Buddha or whoever thought I should live. <sighs> Jackass. We have obtained an artist's depiction of SCP-096's face. Would you like to view it? <sighs> you know, after hearing that thing's screams and the screams of my men, I don't think I want to put a face to what I heard. No. Just... No. All right. I believe we're done here. Thank you, Captain. Let this be on record that I am formally requesting SCP-096 be terminated as soon as possible. End log. 27. There have been 27 attempts on SCP-096's life in the past six months, all directed by the man who set him free, Dr. Daniels. Daniels, for his part, has spent the last six months in a cell. On a good day, he is escorted to the testing chambers to oversee an attempt and then back to that cell. His termination has been delayed in order to allow him to oversee the destruction of SCP-096. But the O5s are losing their patience. Dr. Daniels is a condemned man, but if all he can do is fail, well, they have plenty of other people who can handle this project. He has a month left. Regardless of his results, at the end of that month, he will be terminated. These are his last days and last attempts to take SCP-096 with him. I would like to give a special thank you to The Morrigan, James Saba, Arbiter Soul, Darius Tan, Justin Day, Dernom, Joker Corvus, NJ Vojak, Corey Barker, Eskronok, and Goon Squad. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash the Vulcan. Thank you.